Hi, this is Lindsay Moss coming to you from Yorkville, Illinois for the Art of Education University and another episode of 123ART. If you missed our last episodes, we're focusing on skills that your kindergartners and first graders might be missing initially at the beginning of the school year because of the pandemic. We're meeting them in the moment and getting strategies ready so they can be successful in our art classrooms. So today's episode is all about pincher grasp. And if you've never heard this term before, pincher grasp refers to the tripod shape that your fingers make when they correctly hold a pencil or other drawing tool, right? So do you guys know how to use a pencil? You know that if you've got your thumb and your, yep, and your two fingers make a little munchy. Yep, so I'm gonna, yep, munch, 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 munch. And then we're gonna, we're gonna hold your pencil. Yeah, that's okay, and it's kind of touching that finger. That's fine. You kind of probably do this naturally as an adult, but some of our younger students don't, especially our pre-K kids. Now, we usually have the benefit of fabulous pre-K teachers to kind of help us out and correct this pinch or grass before it comes to kindergarten, but a lot of our kiddos did not have in-person preschool this year. So what do you do about it? Well, a really common thing that you might see with some of your kindergartners is if you give them a larger drawing implement like a crayon or a pencil, they might hold it with a whole fit or they might do something kind of strange where they maybe tuck fingers or have a pencil held sort of differently. And you might be thinking, well, as long as they're drawing, isn't that fine? Well, incorrect pinch or grasp can cause problems long-term because it's not as ergonomic to hold a pencil in these other ways. And it can start to hurt over time, making our kiddos reluctant drawers or writers. And we don't want anybody to be reluctant to draw. So how do you fix this? Well, we're going to go over a bunch of tips and tricks today. The first tip we're gonna talk about is using a shorter crayon. Now, you can go ahead and order shorter crayons, and don't forget, we'll put product information in the description below in case you're interested. You can also use those broken crayons that you have lying around your classroom. They're perfect for this. This one is sort of like a fatter, shorter crayon, and you'll notice because it has a shorter barrel, you can't hold it with a fist. You have to make contact with just your fingers to be able to color. So the size of a crayon or the length of a crayon can really help a kid form the correct grasp. Cool. I'm gonna need a I'm lot of crayons for the rainbow. Oh, that works. Oh, look at how your hand I changed see. right away. That's awesome. Okay, go ahead. Another great idea is to kind of emphasize which fingers are involved in a pincher grasp. And one way to illustrate this to a kid if they just don't get it is to recycle a sock to make a little hand sleeping bag. Sleeping bag sounds snuggly, so it's a great way to explain it to kids. But you cut two holes, one um, here and one at the toe. And the idea is that a kiddo can slide their hand inside with their thumb coming out, thumbs up, and then their two other fingers coming out the other side. So now when you are holding your pencil, you can see that these guys here should be kind of tucked in and curled down. So it kind of helps you understand how to hold your hand. I wouldn't use this for a whole art class or for a whole art project, but if you've got a kiddo that's really struggling to kind of move their pencil into just these three fingers, this might be a great way to illustrate it. Go ahead and stick your hand out. It does smell like bees. Let me see your thumbs up. <laughs> thumb there and then the two fingers there. Okay, good. All right, now can you hold your pencil? Okay. All right, okay. My <laughs> Okay, hold your pencil closer down. Another cool trick for that is using a puff ball. You can show them that a puff ball can be tucked under your last two fingers, freeing up these other fingers to draw color and paint. You can also put googly eyes or pipe cleaners on it to make little antennas or legs, just so it's like a little drawing friend. Okay, so here's how you do it. If this is your hand, you put the little puff ball right here. Now curl those two fingers down, yep. So he's right in there. All right, you got your little puff ball in there? Good, now you can go ahead and keep drawing. Good job. Another thing to think about sort of is the developmental use of a pencil, right? By buying sort of a shorter pencil that is fatter and has hexagonal sides, it's easier for kids to kind of find the right, you know, finger placement and kind of hold it a little better. Um, I'm a big fan of this brand because it is also a little shorter, so it's easier for them to flip it over and use um, the eraser. And again, we'll put all of this information in the description below. You have a very nice pencil grip. Could you switch to this pencil for me? 
There you go, buddy. You're ready. Get get the get the big round one. Once you've kind of tried some of these tips and tricks, if you're still kind of running into a brick wall with a kiddo on their pincher grasp, um, next step would be to sort of talk to your OT. That's the occupational therapist in your district. They have all kinds of additional tips and tricks and training to kind of help your student. Another thing you might want to consider, are they a lefty? That's a possibility too. Last but not least, if you're looking at some fun ways to kind of improve that pincher grasp and that fine motor hand strength for your students, maybe separate from a writing tool, kids love stringing beads. And in my classroom, if you give them something a little bit firmer, not yarn, but something like a pipe cleaner, they can string beads or cut pieces of straw onto a pipe cleaner. It really helps them start with that fine motor control. Another good trick, tearing paper. Because really, when you're holding two pieces of paper, you're doing two pincher grasps and then pulling. You make the two pinchies and you're gonna just tear some little pieces. It can make some little pile of confetti there. Put your fingers together on it. Yep, and then yeah. tear between. There you go. So all these things can work together to kind of improve how our younger artists um, hold their pencils and hold their crayons and markers and colored pencils, all the fabulous things that they need to make masterpieces this fall.